In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. I want to read to you Philippians 2.10, and this is from the Passion Translation. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything, everyone will one day submit to this name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God, his father. Glory to God for his word. I just wanted to come today to just encourage you with those words, with with God's words, that in the name of Jesus, we have victory. We know uh, that that every knee, as the scriptures say, will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. He is Lord. And so I just wanted to encourage you today that if you're going through any trial, any situation, I know you hear some people um, that may not know who he is, may not have a relationship with him, you might hear them call on the name of Jesus. Um, maybe they're saying it as a swear word or, or or cursing or just saying it, but they don't have the knowledge of who he really is, that he is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, it's his Hebrew name, and that he is the way to the Father. He is the only way. And so I just want to encourage you today with those words. And then I also wanted to just discuss a couple of things. I know it's been a minute since I've been up here and I really only like to do videos when I feel that God is uh, moving me to do so. I just don't want to put things out on my own. I know a few months ago I tried to put out some videos and wasn't sure if God wanted me to go that way. So you might see them on my YouTube as private. And the reason why is because I was trying to do like a little um, some little monologues from the Bible, but that might not be the route God wants me to do right now. Not saying that he won't take me back to that, but right now that's not where um, he wants me to be um, in this season. So anyway, I wanted to just come to you just with those words of encouragement about who Jesus is and should be in our lives, you know, and I was just thinking um, on, on Resurrection Sunday, how he's alive, he's living, he's breathing, his word is living, he, his Holy Spirit lives within us, those who have trusted in his name. And I just wanted to kind of go over what I read on Sunday. So John 19, 30 says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And that's from John 19, 30 and Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, God lets us know it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So that scripture sums it up because that means to me, like it's only because of the Lord's mercies that we ain't left here yet. It's only because of God's grace that we aren't just completely blown away right now. And we know there's a lot of things going on in the world in um, Sri Lanka and, and different places, not just there, other places globally where people are being persecuted for trusting in the name of Jesus. So while we have this opportunity, while we have this freedom to really acknowledge and love on him, this is the best time that we can do it while we have the opportunity, while we have the chance in God to lift up his name freely on media, on social media, amongst family and friends. And y'all, it's so easy to do it on social media because like right now I'm just sitting in front of this camera talking to you. 
But it's hard when you're getting around people that you know are dying daily every single day and need to hear the name of Jesus. It's much easier to come on this camera. It's much easier to, to type a post on Facebook. But when God wants us to share it amongst people that we don't know, we have to ask for that boldness. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will give us that boldness when we ask. I know um, I even could go to uh, times of my past where I'm like, Lord, how do I get more people? How do I minister to more people? How do I reach out to more people? And he saw that that was really something I wanted to do. So in certain situations, you know what he would do? He would put me beside a person who just needed, sometimes not even for me to say nothing, but just to be there, to be that light, because we are that light. If I continue to read in Philippians, that's what... Um, Paul is telling um, um, Philippi, that's what he's telling them in the Passion Translation later on after that scripture that I just read to you. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Um, but anyway, going back to what I was saying in regards to ministering to others around us, God could give you one word for that person. One word. God loves you. And keep going about your business. You ain't got to say nothing else. Just tell them God loves you. Or Try to invite them to, to church. You know, anything that we could do to uplift who we are in Christ, to get more people to know who he is. And this is what I wanted to read to you. Philippians 2, 12. My beloved ones, just like you always listen to everything I've taught to you in the past, I'm asking you now to keep following my instructions as though I were right there with you. Now you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy awe of God, which brings you trembling into his presence, God will continually revitalize you and planting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves, for then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture, but you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe, offering them the words of eternal life. So that right there is just showing right now what Paul is saying that when we go out there, when we uh, live that holy and pleasing life unto God. And y'all, we can't do it by ourselves. It takes the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to rule in us, to reign in us through his word, our faith in Jesus Christ. And he can help us be those shining lights, those living lights. Because you know, y'all, we come from dust. We flesh and we was born in sin. Jesus was not born in sin. He came as a son of God. And so because we have him, he is our righteousness. He is who is, when we live our lives pleasing him, he makes us, it is him that makes us holy and makes us righteous unto his name. So we just got to call on his name and believe in him. And I was reading something on CBN.com that I thought was really good. It said, no one can even be made right with God by doing good, keeping the law or by following any other religious rules. It just, it's just not good enough. Laws show us how selfful we are, but God shows us a way to get right with him without keeping requirements of the law, like the Ten Commandments and Moses. We are made right by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. So Jesus was the only one that was good enough to sacrifice his life for our sins. When we accept Jesus by faith and by faith accept what he did for us, he becomes our savior. We are then good enough to stand in the presence of God forever. Powerful, 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 powerful word. So I just want to encourage you today to keep that light shining. If you're feeling down, pick up the word of God. And you know, the enemy is a defeated foe and he brings trickery because sometimes your heart and your spirit could be so like, like this is my Bible app. Your, your heart and your spirit can be like, yes, Lord, I'm hungry. I'm about to read. I'm about to study your word. You pick that Bible up. What happens? Your eyes start getting dreary. Distractions. You think of something that you saw on Instagram. You think of something you saw on Facebook. You think of something somebody said. And your mind begins to wander and drift from the word of God. But we have got to 
just say, you know what, Lord, I'm pressing in. And when he see us pressing in, them eyes going to spark open. You're going to remember something, you know. So just um, just love on them today. God loves you. Um, and, you know, I just pray that God will continue to just um, open up some things um, in your life, sudden open doors, um, new opportunities, uh, new dreams, new visions. And so I just pray that today you have a blessed week um, in God and that you would just continue to know that he loves you with an everlasting love and that cannot change. You can't do anything that will change the love that God has for you. Be blessed in Jesus.